November 5th, bonfire night, gunpowder, treason and plot, and, I might add, anarchy, occultism and magic. <laughs> So, my friends, welcome back. As my mother used to say when I was a child, remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. <laughs> That's how the old rhyme goes. I'm sure a lot of you in the United Kingdom know this. So, bonfire night. Uh, really interesting, very English festival day this with possibly some elements that are very very ancient some elements that are very very modern and have spread across the world and yet lots of people outside of england might not really know what this day is about or they might have a sketchy vague idea so today i'd like to talk about the history of bonfire night and the gunpowder plot uh, a little bit and then talk about maybe some of the um some of the older elements and the wider maybe symbolism, cosmology and meaning kind of behind this, because I think it goes a bit deeper than sectarian violence and thwarted terrorist plots. Uh, and then maybe I'd like to look into the uh, modern version of this and what it kind of means today, some of the symbols from uh, Bonfire Night, including, of course, the infamous Guy Fawkes mask from V for Vendetta and what that sort of all about and how it maybe relates to modern occultism and magic. Then finally at the end of the video I'd like to take you to a kind of typical English bonfire night in the Sussex village of Furl where you can see sort of some of the typical happy anarchy on display and the really weird mishmash of traditions. So a lot of people uh, lament in this country that uh, our traditional Guy Fawkes night or bonfire night, the main fire festival of the year in England anyway, is sort of being supplanted by American Halloween. But I don't think this is so true. In fact, the connections between these two days are much, much older. Uh, but there's a lot of new stuff going on because, my friends, traditions always evolve but often link back to the past as well as reaching forward into the future. Again, if you're in England, you're, you're probably very familiar from school about what the gunpowder plot is all about. Perhaps maybe for any audiences in North America or Australia or elsewhere in the world, I'll just go through it. Um, so this sort of, this, <laughs> to explain bonfire night in a nutshell, this is a night where everyone comes together, uh, sets a big bonfire on fire and burn to death an effigy of a Catholic. <laughs> this is the day we burn Catholics to death. Uh, strange kind of thing to celebrate. The Catholic in question is, of course, Guy Fawkes. Uh, who, even if you don't know who he is, you've definitely seen someone wearing a mask of him at some protest somewhere, maybe on the news. Uh, very interesting how his image has been co-opted into very different spheres, and there, there's a bit more of a story here. So, the history of Guy Fawkes' night, the sort of superficial history anyway. In 1605, a group of Catholics uh, who felt like they had been mistreated by the Protestant establishment of the day, uh, they felt a bit aggrieved and decided they would blow up Parliament and uh, kill the new king, King James I of England and VI of Scotland. Blow him back to Scotland, they would. Sounds a bit rude. Um, so they put barrels and barrels of gunpowder underneath Parliament, underneath a uh, in a cellar they had rented and uh, waited for Parliament to be recalled and then they were going to set the whole thing off and blow the whole lot up. Unfortunately there was an anonymous tip-off and uh, the Catholic terrorist that was charged with lighting the barrels was caught uh, by the authorities and you know what he said his name was? Uh, they, they said, what's your name? And instead of saying, you know, Guido Fawkes, he said, uh, John. John what? Uh, Johnson, literally what he said, John Johnson, which sounds like someone just making up a name on the spot. Anyway, Guy Fawkes was um, hauled off and subjected to horrible torture <laughs> from the very gentle to the very, very worst by royal authority of King James, who was probably quite relieved that he didn't get his head blown off. Um, 
And yes, horrible, horrible torture. And then he gave away the rest of his uh, conspirators. Robert Catesby was another of, the, another of them. And they were all uh, hanged and hung and drawn and quartered and, uh, you know, executed in the most horrible ways. So that is essentially the, the day that we celebrate. We celebrate in Britain the day that Parliament wasn't destroyed. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than that because there's now lots of kind of overlapping elements to this as well. Some now say that uh, <laughs> some now say that Guy Fawkes was the last honest man to enter Parliament, and quite often Guy Fawkes is kind of celebrated as an anti-establishment figure. So this day was marked, you know, in 1606, 1607, 1608. Uh, this was always marked by uh, just quite a humble ringing of church bells to remember, to, to you know, remember <laughs> the fact that, that, that God, Protestant God, had stopped the evil Catholics from destroying God's own political institution, the Houses of Parliament in Westminster, England, God's chosen people. Uh, that was the initial thing. But gradually, gradually, other elements were added to the day, which we, some of them still celebrate today, some of which might have been older. So the old fire festival of this time of year, uh, which is normally associated with Halloween, that sort of, the, the, the traditions associated with that time of year, which has ancient roots in pre-Christian Celtic Britain, or pre-Celtic, right back to the Bronze Age, these elements started creeping in, and new ones started developing. This is, you know, it's, 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 at the right time of year, November 5th, October 31st. It, it, it's a time of year, traditionally the time for remembering the dead uh, and for lighting big bonfires. This goes right back to pastoral cultures in the Iron Age and Bronze Age, like I said. Uh, Beltane and Samhain, that would be when you'd be driving your livestock to new pastures, you'd be lighting big bonfires for the purposes of purification. I talk more about this in my Samhain video uh, that I'll put a link to. Uh, so this is the time for a, a festival fire, and this is sort of you know the big one. This is the big this is the big time of year, the end of summer and the beginning of winter harvest time. And along with this, lots of traditional Halloween things uh, or punky night things in the West Country. This was often maybe pushing barrels of burning tar down hillsides, maybe some uh, distant remnant of, of, a, of a solar right of some kind. They do it at Beltane as well. Uh, also um, getting up to mischief, the social order being turned upside down, lots of happy chaos at this time of year. Guising and trick-or-treating, all these things that went over to America and then got slightly commodified and commercialized and pitched back to us here in, in Europe. All of these things were already present, so they just jumped onto this new bonfire night. I imagine the sort of puritanical um, authorities were quite happy about this because it secularized this day and made it about demonizing Catholics. It's so weird this day is about celebrating burning Catholics to death. It's so odd. So what's, what's the deal with this guy then? Are we gonna set this dude on fire or what? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna take him down. We take him down outside the pub. Right. And then the cracker mode goes off. This is Guy Fawkes, by the way. That's Guy Fawkes, yeah, is he? Yeah. So we're setting fire to Catholics? No. Oh. But it's not. It's about all the other stuff, which which the Puritans of the day kind of labelled pagan, maybe for good reason. Uh, but now it could all be swept under the secular kind of umbrella of bonfire night. But, you know, it just began to shift and change and mutate over the centuries. Um, many of the traditions of this have died out now, sadly. When I was a kid, I remember uh, there being a penny for the guy and all the kids of a local community would push around um, a sort of uh, a, a, a guy, a, a stuffed man filled with newspaper or straw, they put a pumpkin or a turnip or bucket on his head or something like that and uh, there would be penny for the guy and you'd just go around collecting money and then you'd set fire to the, to the Catholic. That's not done so much anymore. I haven't really seen that, but I'm sure it is done in some places. The burning barrels, I saw that in Furl uh, this year. There are elements of military parade today, which is interesting. It could be because Remembrance Sunday is just, you know, the next week. So it's got an element of military parade, but maybe there's a deeper symbology to this as well. Remembrance Sunday, uh, 
which is why we wear the poppy, is to remember all the dead of the First World War, all those that lost their lives for us, and also, by extension, all those who lose their lives in military service. Uh, this is a very British thing, I'm aware you might not be aware of this in the USA. But it's interesting that we're remembering the dead. On the 11th of November, you know, even if you're in the middle of the supermarket, people just stop at the 11th hour, the 11th minute of the 11th hour of the 11th day. This is a really modern custom of remembering the ancestors at the time of year when we traditionally remember the ancestors. I find this so interesting that modern and old um, traditions often, there's, there's a synchronicity at play. I, under, I often wonder, you know, what that's about. Other traditions uh, that are still around today, satire and, you know, just, just chaos and, and madness, licensed chaos is, is basically what it's all about. Uh, at Furl, <laughs> for instance, there were lots of people throwing bangers and fireworks at the, at the head of the bonfire society that's trying to give a speech. There's often um, politically motivated guys now. We don't always burn Catholics anymore. In fact, it's quite rare. Uh, quite often we burn, well, the Pope, another Catholic, or maybe Osama bin Laden. He was being burnt for a while, you know. Uh, Donald Trump, he's had his place there. Margaret Thatcher, she's been burnt to death many times in the 1980s. And this year in Furl, it was Keir Starmer, the current leader, the current Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So the roots, the historical roots of this go right back to England's schism with the Catholic Church, kick-started by King Henry VIII, who didn't want the Pope to tell him what to do, especially because the Pope just didn't quite realise quite how sexy Anne Boleyn was and would not annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. So uh, in, in sort of Brexit 1.0, King Henry VIII split with the Pope, split with the Church, split with Europe, and for decades and decades afterwards England kind of oscillated between extreme Catholicism and Protestantism. Uh, some of the most bloody times being during the reign of Bloody Mary who burned to death lots of Protestant heretics uh, and obviously lots of Catholics were also burned to death. We often think of witches as being burned to death uh, but no witches weren't normally burned to death they were normally squashed to death or just hanged by the neck until dead. Burning was for a particular kind of heresy, uh, the most evil sin, because uh, it's basically rebelling against God, even worse than copping it off with the devil in the mind of some of these Catholic or uh, Protestant hardliners. So that's sort of that's sort of the cultural milieu. Uh, England at the time, you know, uh, there, there's a. It, it's difficult to understate how important this was. This, you know, whether you're Catholic or Protestant, it's basically or Muslim or whatever. It's basically about the the whole cosmic order and the salvation of the whole human race and the future of the universe itself. It's also worth remembering that the context of um, the, the context all of this takes place in is one of sort of occultism and magic in a way. It's 1605. Uh, magic and science haven't officially split yet. As I said earlier, this this battle between Protestantism, Protestantism and Catholicism, you know, it's playing out in the political sphere, but it's also playing out in the cosmos and in heaven as well. And uh, there are Christian wizards, mages, magicians that are employing angels to go at each other. This is literally, we have this on record. Uh, John Dee, 30 years previously, used angels to raise a storm to destroy the Spanish Armada. Uh, he is uh, employing non-material entities to go after the evil Pope, uh, the, the hammer of the Demiurge and his evil archons, uh, the, the evil Catholic ploy for, you know, the true Queen of Heaven, Queen Elizabeth I. That's how cosmic all of this actually is. Um, and we have those writings, you know, we have those grimoires. And, and this, is, this, is still going, this is still going on, you know. In the village, the witch might bewitch or protect cattle, cattle but on, on the level of nations, court magicians and wizards are going at nation states and the stakes are high, you know, eternal sal salvation, the future of the cosmos. So moving forward through the centuries and the symbol of Guy Fawkes as an enduring symbol, I've mentioned occultism and magic and the sort of 
background uh, that all of this took place in. It wasn't just a sectarian terrorist assault on Parliament, something else going on. I mentioned John Dee and his sort of magical system in the Western ceremonial magic tradition. This kind of evolved through the centuries and now, these days, there's something called chaos magic, a system of magic developed in the 1970s. It's based on the workings of earlier magicians like Austin Osmond Spare or Alistair Crowley, which is based on earlier 19th century um, movements like the Golden Dawn, looking, going back to Enochian magic, going all the way back to the magic of the ancient Greeks and ancient Egyptians. You know, that's how long the lineage of Western magic is. Why am I talking about magic so much? Well, the V for Vendetta mask, uh, conceived by Alan Moore, a comic book writer in the 1980s, for the comic book V for Vendetta. It's about a dystopian fascist regime and the resistance to it uh, by a guy wearing a Guy Fawkes mask. It's Alan Moore is a known ceremonial magician. He's into chaos magic, he's into occultism. Uh, he designed that mask and specifically um, <laughs> uh, sigilized for it to spread across the world and to be a uh, symbol of resistance. Well, it has. We've seen that mask on the streets of the Occupy movement, in the Arab Spring, probably in the Hong Kong resistance movement. Wherever there's a resistance movement against a perceived authority, we see that mask. But he did that. He did that. He Through, through a magical act, Alan Moore made that image of the V for the Vendetta mask spread across the world. It's really interesting that, uh, that what was initially a day for the authorities to celebrate that a terrorist plot had been quashed has now slightly been flip reversed and now we celebrate Guy Fawkes a lot of the time as a symbol of resistance. So just interesting how, how two-sided so much of this is and how that vein of occultism runs right back in the ancient harvest traditions all the way through, all the way through, all the way through the Samhain and Halloween traditions of the, of the pre-Christian and then Christian era uh, to this political terrorist event, the gunpowder plot, and then through the centuries it sort of worked back, picking up earlier uh, occult imagery, all the way to the modern age where it's a kind of celebration of absolute anarchism and anti-establishmentism and people don't really sort of know what it means anymore in that happy chaos perhaps uh, work can be done what's this all about then what are we doing oh it's something to do with christmas i think yeah. christmas <laughs> all right my friends uh without further ado i will take you on the uh to furl tonight for the traditional bonfire night celebration <laughs> It's so old. It's got like It should have a, it's so old it should have a quack. What's it for? It's when you throw the you throw and it goes in the hole. Throw what? The thing. It's like it's ah, the metal thing. thing. It, it gives you a deep sense of satisfaction. Is it like a little bit like um, uh, I thought it was a commode. Is it yeah, it's like building. So what you're saying uh, is like fuck it and enjoy life. Yeah. All right. Oh, I see.
flame by flame. Send the lightning to the sky. Drink the round dry. Drink the round dry. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> They're not real, they're not even, look guys, they're not even real wizards. Are they gonna come back up there? Do it in more mime. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking awesome. Are they gonna set fire to that guy? Look, he looks like a Catholic <laughs> with his stupid hat. Sorry, don't mean to embarrass you in your village. It's, not, it's too late. <laughs> Why are these ones dressed like Mexicans? I don't think I Oh, okay. I love it, I fucking love it, it's fucking great. I think he's the chief wizard. What's the deal with this guy then? Are we going to set this dude on fire or what? Yeah, yeah, we're going to take him down. We take him down outside the pub. Right. And then the cracker roll goes off. This is Guy Fawkes, by the way. That's Guy Fawkes, yeah, is he? Yeah. So we're setting fire to Catholics? No. Oh. We're not, we're not setting fire to Catholics. We can't, we can't say that. That's, that's religious, religious hatred. <laughs> I don't give a shit who we set fire to, to be honest. Set fire to everyone. Equality in immolation. So what's fucking going on here then? Um, they're going to burn the witch they found. Cool. Is that her? You're the most well-dressed man of this whole procession. <laughs> Excellent tricorn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Try Corn should come back. I love it. I believe that. I'm with you, mate. What's this all about then? What are we doing? Oh, it's something to do with Christmas, I think. Yeah. Christmas! Hail Jesus! Hail the risen Lord! Is it really though? No. You fibber! I know, stop you it, You fibber! <laughs> <laughs> Oi, green man. What's all this about then? Which one? What's all this about then? Mark Yeah. Green man. Yeah, but what's it got to do with today? We're in it, can't you? I like that answer. <laughs> Exactly. No, I'm happy that it's happened here. Who are we burning tonight? Everyone. Everyone. Close. I'd have never seen them get this close before. <laughs> <laughs> but they could work on their technique, they could have more of a rocket launched projectile system. Oh, really? Thank you. Uh, I've been hit in the face of the fire a few times in my life, and it doesn't actually hurt. It's just, they're just made of lies and magic. We're to be at a time when even more of those rights are being challenged. That's not let them. These are your rights, they're my rights. And here in Fowl, we like to uphold those rights. We hold our torches high and we process. The day we stop, or with the day it all stops. So I hope you enjoy the processions. It's the most important part of the night. I'm not sure you know, I'm not sure you know any difference. You remain uneducated, most of you, not all of you, and disrespect your king. She's saying we're uneducated. Yeah. So 
sadly, sadly, it's my job to try and educate you guys. Uh oh. Uh oh. You shouldn't have said that, mate. They're going to throw shit at you now. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't understand it. None of this makes none of this makes sense. <laughs> Okay, what are we here for? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> if you're here, Guido Ford, who would ever want to do that? But why? Why would he want to do that? He's saying, uh, God, God, if Fox was innocent, it'd be, uh, Protestant monarchs. Yeah, but he's saying, Guido Ford, who would ever he was a limited intelligence. But other people say he was the last he and those honest man man to the parliament. Conspired so he bring about a change in the world. <laughs> <laughs> they were all just as guilty as him. Maybe Someone's lobbing so. a torch. <laughs> we all know a good fool guy, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, oh. I'm sure you will remember their names. They were. Here we go, your bit. Ready? The leader, Robert Catesby. Thomas Winter. Jack Wright. Thomas Percy. Robert Winter. So are we celebrating the Chris right. I'm not so sure. Robert Pease, Thomas Pikes, John Brown. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> I'm Rose Rookwood, Francis How does Tresham, this relate to and Gaza? Emerald, and of what course, about Lebanon? Is that too tough? Yeah. It it caused a bit of a bit of a confusion. It's brilliant. I love Lord it. <laughs> oh, almost, almost got him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking hell! That went right in his torch. I think that was my son. <laughs> Quick, finish! Anyway, Quick, hurry up! I'm strapping that bit. It led to a trial. After the trial, Clive Barkson is fellow... Oh, it's going to get worse. ...guilty of high treason and set a sentence to the gruesome death of hanging, drawing... I'm not going to be invited back again, am I? <laughs> I swear every year we say, I've never seen anything like this. Oh, so you remember the last time we were like, no, it's not normally like this. It's not normally like this. They don't normally try and set fire to the guns on fire. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, on public Thanksgiving, they agreed that every year the gunpowder plot should be held in a perpetual remembrance uh -oh, the and the day us now. be a holiday forever and thankfulness to God. Hey! They should then follow if we're still alive. But ladies and gentlemen, and this is why we do this, as I've said before, freedom of speech is about core values and tradition. And it's about our freedom, each and every one of us. I like that sentiment. And yes, stuff at him. ladies and gentlemen, this is why we must keep this tradition freedom, alive. Freedom of throwing stuff at a man on a podium. Every year. So please keep coming. So please join with me as we say the bonfire prayer. Remember, remember. Oh, yeah, good
on him. There's gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason. Hey! Skyfox, Skyfox, twas his intent. I thought I was the right timing then, but I was off. You just want to yell, don't you? Yeah. Three score barrels of powder below. I think you're to the Thank you, thank you, Kate. With a dark lantern and burning match. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. Let's go again. Right. <laughs> it's your fault, not mine. He's going to chuck himself off there in a minute. We're starting again. With a dark lantern and burning match. Hello, oh, boy. What shall we do with him? What shall we do with him? Set fire to him slowly! Catholics burning alive. So beautiful. Your guy's tradition, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fucking mortar. <laughs> <laughs>